What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and it is time for another 5 Minute Friday. Before this video starts, I will let you know that this is probably going to be longer than 5 minutes. And if you are upset about that, I apologize and I will be sure to issue a full refund for what you paid to watch this video. Nothing. So before we get into this knife, I have to talk about this quick 5 second clip. This here, folks, is my emergency EDC photographer's pouch that will save your life. I mean, it might save your life, who knows? It's very plausible that it could, both you know, figuratively and literally, depending on the situation that you're in. Dude, I know that was a tiny thing, but that was Peter McKinnon actually crediting that one of my recent EDC bag videos gave him inspiration to do something similar. If you don't know Peter, uh, what? I've talked about him briefly in the past about how much of an inspiration he has been for me to step up my video making. And of course, 5 Minute Fridays, part of this idea stemmed from his 2 Minute Tuesdays. It's just really cool to find out that the inspiration has sort of come full circle now. So Pete is another awesome content creator and you should definitely check out his channel because pretty much anything that he has ever uploaded blows anything that you've seen here on this channel out of the water. Now since he is sort of into knives and EDC type of stuff, I figured why not make this week's 5 Minute at Friday on one of my all-time favorite ballast songs, the Microtech Tachyon 3. The Tachyon 3 is the newest iteration of Microtech's high-quality ballast songs, and it distinguishes itself from previous models in a few different ways. For starters, the milled aluminum handles are a single-piece channel construction, and the anodized finish on them is top-notch. The knife is held either open or closed with a very springy latch, and the bite handle even comes standard with a pocket clip. On this version, the LMAX blade has a non-sharpened swedge ground tip and milled grooves with the Microtech logo, production date, and blade steel markings. Now one of the most important features of a ballast song like this is of course the action. I'm not crazy picky when it comes to this because I wouldn't consider myself a hardcore flipper, but the Tachyon 3 definitely exceeds my expectations with an advanced ceramic ball bearing pivot assembly. There's virtually no handle play and that makes this thing flip smooth as butter. The pivots use Viton O-rings for low dampening and heat treated stainless steel retainer plates to ensure longer lasting performance. Now inside of this box they do include a little product manual on how to take care of the knife. And then probably the most important thing when it comes to ballast songs, a little adjustment tool. This little guy is super important because as you can see, the screws that they use are proprietary, much like most knives coming from Microtech. So this thing is super high quality, but even this little adjustment tool has really awesome machining all the way around it. And you can even tell the quality of craftsmanship just from this little tool that they include. So there's a lot of different things that drew me to this knife to begin with, one being the pocket clip. There aren't a whole lot of high quality ballast songs that use pocket clips like this, and because the Tachyon 3 has this, I actually ended up carrying it for quite a while. Once I got this thing into my hand, then I really started to appreciate all of the little details that Microtech put into it, like the spring-loaded latch. This thing will stay out straight in line with the bite handle, that way it's not going to get in the way when you're flipping it around. And then it also holds the knife open very tight because I've seen other latches that really don't do a good job of that. Here's a quick look at the handle play or lack thereof. The tolerances on this thing are just top notch. And that is what allows it to flip so buttery smooth and almost silent. I am a fan of this more traditional style blade here. It is a clip point. If you look in close here on the spine of the blade, you can see that they actually ground this point down almost to an edge on the back side. I also really like plain edge blades like this. I don't really find a use for serrations. And you guys probably know that I'm not a big steel snob, but this LMAX blade so far has been great. Let me find some stuff to cut. So far, I've really only used this thing to open letters and boxes and stuff like that. But as you can see, it is still razor sharp. From all the way down towards the handle, all the way up the belly, and even on the tip of the blade, if you really take your time here, you can actually cut little curls off of a sticky note like this. I have not touched the edge of this blade since I took it out of the box and have been using it, so it probably could use a little bit of a touch up, but for the most part, it cuts things and that's all that I really need. I am obviously not going to be shaving with this thing. 
Now, if you can still find this knife, it retails for about $270 to $300, depending on where you find it. So it's definitely not a budget knife, but it's also not quite as expensive as ballast songs like this can get. For me, since it is legal to carry them where I'm from, this thing honestly fits the role of a fidget toy more than an actual knife. And if a lot of you knife nuts out there are being honest with yourself, chances are you carry a knife and just play with the action of it more than you actually use it to cut things. Now I'm definitely not saying that I would not use this knife, but at the same time, I'm not gonna beat on it and abuse it. If I know that I'm going to be going up to the mountains or to my range or something like that, where chances are I will have to use a knife, I will probably have something else in my pocket that I am okay with beating on. Now, when I was talking to Pete about this knife, he was like, yo, show some battle song tricks in that video. So I guess I will show you some of the stuff that I know, but this is just a quick disclaimer. I am not that good with a battle song. I know some of the basic moves. I don't even know all of the actual terminology. And if I draw blood while showing any of these, this one is on you. So the first thing that people typically learn is just the simple way of opening a battle song. With a spring-loaded latch like this, if you just grip down on it, it will pop open and stay out of your way. Now there are two different handles on here like I was referring to earlier. You have the safe handle over here where the edge of the blade is facing away from you when you have a grip on it. And then you have the bite handle on this side and nine times out of 10, that is where you will find the latch. And if you grab from this side, obviously when the blade is coming close, it can come in contact with your fingers. So for the most part, especially when learning basic tricks, you never want to grab this bite handle. Now the easiest way to open a knife like this, which a lot of people learn first, is simply flicking it out first over your finger, rotating the handle 180 degrees while flipping it one more time, and then flipping it back up towards yourself. Keep in mind you are holding onto the safe handle the entire time you are doing this, that way that blade has no chance of coming in contact with your fingers. So again, I'll do that in slow motion. I'm holding it between my pointer finger and my thumb. I will flip the knife out over my finger, rotate the handle 180 degrees while flipping it again, and then flip it up to open, and then I'll do the reverse of that to close it. Now another way I will show you how to open this is basically taking that whole last sequence and cutting out all of the middle work. You're going to take all of these steps and sort of combine them into one. I typically do this one sort of underhand, I'm holding the knife down towards the ground. I'm going to throw the knife out away from me while rotating the handle and then pulling it back to me all in one motion. In real time, that looks like this. And then the same action can be reversed to close it. This one is a little bit tricky because of the way you have to kind of angle your wrist. But if you have one of these and you're playing around with it, chances are you'll pick it up in no time. And that is definitely one of the fastest ways to open one of these. Actually, speaking of fast ways to open ballast songs like this, another one of my favorite moves is the latch drop. For this one, you will hold the knife with the latch facing upwards. Again, it is nice to have a spring latch in this situation. I squeeze that, it pops open, and it will remain facing upwards. I'm going to pinch the latch between the lower part of my index finger and my thumb. And now doing this slow, I am basically going to let the knife fall. And as you saw when it hit the bottom there, this stop pin is coming into contact with the bite handle, which I'm holding onto. And then the safe handle sort of flips up a little bit. Now, if you do that, but give it a little bit more force, the safe handle will fly all the way up and then you can come down and grab it. This one took a little bit of practice before I could start getting them clean, but this is what it looks like in real time. So that's just another fun sort of move. You're going to be holding the knife backhand when you do that. And then from there, of course, you can pinch the safe handle again and then flip the knife back around. Now we'll get into two a little bit more complex moves and this is probably where I'm going to cut myself. So this is going to be a simple form of a rollover and this is exactly what it sounds like. I'm holding the knife in the normal position by the safe handle. I'm going to flick it out like I was opening it like normal, but this time when I flick the knife out and it comes into contact with my pointer finger, I'm actually going to let go of the safe handle the knife will then rotate around my finger and I will use my pointer finger and my thumb to now grab the bite handle and then finish the move. It goes without saying, but grabbing that bite handle is obviously very dangerous because if you get your finger caught in here, that knife is going to have a lot of momentum coming around and chances are you're going to end up cutting yourself. Now let's see if I can do this real time without drawing blood. These are always a little bit sketchy, which is why I moved back there. Chances are you could drop the knife and obviously you don't want it to go into your legs or your feet. 
So once that move is finished, you are now holding it in sort of a backwards grip here, still holding onto the bite handle. Now you can reverse that same motion and throw it out again, but this time the blade is going to wrap around your thumb. As it comes around your thumb, you are of course back to the safe handle, which you can grab onto and then finish the move however you see fit. So again, here is that initial setup. And then once I'm here, I sort of do this move a little bit sideways. It's sketchy, that's for sure, and I probably have no business telling people how to do this. But yeah, hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on how to somewhat safely operate a balisong like this and maybe you learn something, maybe not. Microtech also makes the Tachyon 3 with a trainer blade so it is rounded off all around and you won't have to worry about slamming this thing on your finger and cutting yourself. Those are also fairly expensive too so if you want to learn Balasong tricks like this, you could simply put electrical tape or something similar over the blade. That way you don't have to worry about that thing biting your fingers. So I guess that's all that I really had for today. If you guys have any questions on this knife, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see more Balasong type of stuff, I have a few more of these in my collection collection and I can definitely do more videos on them in the future. Now if you are new to the channel consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week and that's going to be all for today. So as always thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.